do you improve the quality of lives of ordinary citizens in this country? Because at the end of the day, it is about the resources that have been devoted to provide for goods and services in this country, but which unfortunately have been diverted to other things, or which unfortunately are not being used for the purpose for which they are meant for. So if we think about the anti-corruption agencies not only as, not as an agency that is supposed to catch thieves, but it's an agency to improve the quality of our own citizens, ensuring that citizens get what they deserve, ensuring that citizens get what they are expecting from the government. Citizens are getting what government said is going to do. To me, that is one way you can shift the paradigm shift, the paradigm around anti corruption agencies in Nigeria. So that EFCC, ICPC, the police, and all the other agencies are really about how do we improve the quality of lives of our own citizens. And this is where I think that the work that Tracker does is so critical and so important. Because what it is asking is, where is the ball hall that was supposed to be constructed in this place? Where is it now? But what does a ball hall mean? A ball hall means about preventing dysentery, it means about preventing cholera, it means about providing basic necessity of life. And that is what it does. When tracker and other organizations go to hospitals, go to a clinic, and say, okay, this clinic is supposed to have a bed, a medical doctor, the medication is there. What is essentially tracker is asking is, should any woman die because there is no magnesium sulfate in this place? Should any woman die because of eclampsia? Should any woman die because of hemorrhage? Should any woman die because of sepsis? So it's about saving lives. It's about ensuring that ordinary lives are being saved, ensuring that our women are able to deliver in hospitals, in clinics, because those services are there to ensure that they do. It is about preventing of maternal mortality, it's about preventing of maternal death, it's about ensuring that women who are there, who are supposed to get those services, are alive and are happy to give birth to children and not to be deformed or not to die as a result of the, um, the corrupt practices that happen in our own societies and our things. When Draka follows the money, to, sure, to make sure that the road that is supposed to be constructed between village A and village B is there. What it is saying, what it's doing is, how do we prevent accidents in our streets? How do we ensure that people do not die as a result of potholes, poorly constructed roads, or other health hazards that are there on our roads? And that is the way in which I think that our society should be organized and that I think that how organizations like budget and anti-corruption agencies should be seen as organizations that are meant to improve, to ensure the services that are supposed to be there in our society are there and readily available. What I think one of the beauties of the work that uh, Tracker does is the involvement of communities. This is very important and very critical because organizations and regular civil society organizations usually function when there are the resources for them to do. But if we involve the communities, and there are already community-based groups and organizations, everywhere you go, there is an age grade, there is a community development association, there is maybe an Okada organization, there are maybe all kinds of associations that are already there in those communities. So what we should be doing is not to go and set up a, 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 a group in that community, but work with those community groups and organizations that are already exist in those communities. Because those people will be there, whether Tracker is there or not, whether Budget is there or not, whether MacArthur is there or not, this is their own community. And therefore, they care for their own organization, they care for their own communities, and therefore we should support 
those community groups and organizations to do what they actually able to do, but now to probably introduce new elements of the work so that they see that those projects that are there in their communities, that they are all executive arm of government or where the legislature are supposed to do, are there and they ensure that they follow and ensure that those services are provided by those arms of government. So let's not impose or bring in new organizations just because MacArthur is there to give money to set up a community group or not. What we should be thinking about and doing, and which I think is one of the beauties of the charter, is that let's work with already existing community groups and organizations. So if it is an Okada group that is already there in the community, that is already doing some services for Okada members and others, I think our own push is how can you also take on this issue of something that belongs to you as a community member, something that has been promised by your own legislative uh, legislature, something that has been produced, uh, promised to you by your own governor or by your own minister and now has come to the community. How do you ensure that these services is actually already there and give those the service that you want, that you need, that you should have? This work that is being done by organizations like TRACA and Budget, for me, is one of the reasons why we should always support the existence of civil society groups and organizations. People always think of civil society groups and organizations in a negative, nuisance, problematic angle. They think that civil society organizations are there just to criticize government, or that they are only there just to abuse people, or they are only there in order to cause trouble. No. But civil societies in this country have been playing very, very proactive, very productive, very helpful, very supportive work that they are doing. And the work around TRACAP is an illustration of how civil society organizations are not just a nuisance, but ensuring that the water, the electricity, the road, the clinic, and all those things that are supposed to be there for government are being done. And this kind of positive role that civil society groups and organizations are doing is something that I think that we do not celebrate enough of it. We only think of civil society groups and organizations in a very negative sense. That these people are just causing trouble, that they are doing a press conference to abuse us, that they are all the things, and therefore uh, many people are rushing with all kinds of bills to the National Assembly all the time, every year, saying that, oh, we want to regulate civil society, that we want to regulate them, we want to regulate them. Simply, this is the part that we're not reading, other than the fact that people are asking questions. People are only looking at civil society in terms of the advocacy work that they do. And the advocacy is very important and very critical. But the fact also is that without those civil society and good organizations, some of the people in those villages will never see the water, the electricity, the clinics, the hospitals, all those things that are supposed to provide for them, they will have never seen that. And for me, I think that's one thing that is not adequately celebrated in the country in terms of how civil societies are actually contributing to the development. Even if you put the development in terms of projects, how are they contributing to the development of our communities and our societies? We as civil society organizations should all not, also not assume that every person in government is a corrupt, bad person, that we should just abuse them and that they are useless people. No. We also in civil society, there are some of our members who are bad. And maybe some of them are worse than the people in government that we abuse. And therefore it's very important that we do not also think and align and think that all people in government are bad people and therefore there's nothing we can do about them. And I think that the relationship, for example, that have been established between uh, budget tracker and ICPC and it's one of the most important relations that we have to see. Because we as civil society, there's a limit to what we can do. There's a limit to which we can report. But what is most important is to get someone to act. So that when we go and see an institution that is supposed to be there, when we go and see that there's a water that is supposed to be provided and it's not there, who should we go to to get an action that will ensure that water is provided? So we can do our own advocacy work, very important. We should go to the radio stations, we should do the naming and shaming, we should do all the things that we need to do to draw attention to, but at the same time, we should also work with government agencies. Government agencies that have the teeth, 
government agencies that can give the sanctions so that when people or contractors are refused to do everything that they're supposed to do, despite all the things that we have done in terms of bringing attention to them, in terms of having a conversation with them, in terms of uh, naming and shaming, because there are some people who probably in this country have become beyond shame. They have become beyond shame. Because you see their names every day. Their children see their names every day on, in pages of newspaper, on the television, in social media, and everything. So if they have become beyond shame, what we need to see is where are the government agencies that take, take the responsibility to ensure that what these people have taken, those people have hiding it there, who is there in order to help us to make sure that those services are provided. So that's why I think it's very important that the relationship between communities, because at the end of the day, they are the real victims. They should own the process, and they should be the one who should lead the process. So the relationship between communities, civil society groups, and government, relevant government agencies, government agencies that are willing and able to act, I think these are important elements of the work that we want to do. Hence, I think from our own perspective at the Makata Foundation, we always think of our own strategy as that of a sandwich. There is voice, demand from the bottom, and there is a supply side at the top, whereby government agencies that are able to act should also come together. And that's why in all our work that we do, we support both civil society groups, but also government agencies. Because we think that's only when we have civil society groups and when we have government agencies who act together that the desired change will happen. Now, which means that government agencies should also not be left on their own. Because even the best government officials can be, in many cases and sometimes, can be, uh, uh, can be insensitive or, or not responding to what the desires and the wishes of people are. So we have to remind them, we have to tell them that this is what government says it's supposed to do. And therefore you have to act, and we should not leave them alone. Similarly, civil society groups can make all the demand that we want, and they should do all the naming and shaming. But we also need them, when we, but we also recognize the fact that their own naming and shaming has some limitations. But when they work with government agencies to bring about the design change, that is when the change that we desire in the country is going to happen. So on this note, uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share this uh, few moments with you. This is a very important work we are doing. The work we are doing, essentially, is about improving the quality of lives of our own citizens. Thank you very much.